John has booked a year in advance. He has a book ready to hit shelves next year, and he sells out lecture halls across the country. This video was taken during a seminar in Andover, Massachusetts last November. Two sisters desperate to make a connection. John says they did. He brought their mother through. Through their tears, the sisters chuckle at her message. Take care of my stuff. <laughs> Do you understand that? Do you get it? You... She's very foo-foo with her linens or her hanky. I don't know. She's, she's got the linens or the curtains or something. Just take care of her stuff. And she's making me aware also of, I don't know if she was a neat freak or if she, do you understand this? Still have doubts? So did I. I wanted to see it happen with our cameras rolling. I believe there's something to it. I know it, it can't be explained, but um, you know, I, I'm open-minded. We begin with John Bray, a bit nervous, but hoping John Holland can link to family members who have passed. I'd be interested in hearing um, from Bumpa, um, my wife's grandfather, who I was very close to. Um, I'd also, I'd like to hear from my, my paternal grandmother because she, she was terminally ill and I never knew it. And she passed and I, I hadn't spoken to her for a year or maybe two before she passed. And then there's this man, John's friend, a police officer. Will he come through? I died in 97. The two meet for the first time. Right away, John Holland makes a strong connection. Remember the grandmother John Bray was hoping to find? Where does the Rose name come in? That's my grandmother, okay. paternal grandmother. Who's passed, correct? Yeah. All right, because Rose is coming through here, too, and she makes me aware of well, the water They came in the boat that, from that, Italy. That's fine. That, that works right. for me. That works for me, John, all right? Nobody worked in the toy factory. My grandmother Rose worked okay. at uh, Willows, which made balsa wood airplanes. Okay. She used to get what is that? Them. Toy airplanes or something? Toy airplanes. Okay, because she's men the mentioning I worked at the toy factory or, yeah, or the toy thing. That okay? was Rose. All right. And then a new connection is made. Another person John Bray thought he may hear from. John, where's the cop? A friend of mine. Okay. Who's here? He passed. Okay, the cop wants to come through. All right, oh. the cop is coming through here because I'm seeing bars, which is my, my cop connection. He's making me aware, too, though. That this is a friend that you two go way back. I mean, there's, yes. a, there's history there. So yes. he's just giving you a hello as he comes in here. Then, something about his job, a job John Holland knows nothing about. Where in the family, John, where is the person who works in paralegal? Or That's the, me. All right, fine, because this is definitely... That's the job saying. again. Okay. So you're, you work in a law firm or a paralegal or something? I'm a paralegal in a corporation. Okay, because she's mentioned, mentioned the law stuff here. So this is how, this, she is the one that really wants to connect with you, okay? Because I'm asking her, then what does he do for a living? She said, mention the paralegal. Yes. This is how she's coming through here, too. Remember Bumpa? Turns out he was a gambler. That's the signal John Holland says he's getting that Bumpa wants to be heard, too. This is a guy who used to, like, play the horses or something, oh, correct? Yeah, he was All a right. fun-loving guy. Okay. <laughs> Because he wanted to get more detail about the gambling stuff there. Sure. All right? Yeah. He's saying, say, ho say I, I bet the horses. Yep. Finally, the voices and images fade away. John Holland is done. And John Bray can't believe what he's just heard. There are so many branches to my family due to the, having the adopted family, the in-laws, um, uh, my, my paternal um, grandparents, my maternal grandparents. There's no way he could possibly have known all the facts he had known and been able to jump around like he did without knowing. This is Rose. Rose is my paternal grandmother. Okay. She, she did mo most talking, yeah. She was a dominant personality, yeah, she was in life. The policeman was a good friend of my, mine. His name is Art Dunn. Art died in 97. He, he died relatively young. If you recall, John said he passed quickly, and it was. It was very sudden. He had a, a massive heart attack. John Bray was convinced, but if you're still not, Coming up next, you'll meet Karen Jean. She went to John looking for reassurance her loved ones were okay. Did she get it? Find out when Chronicle returns. We return now for John Holland's second client that day, Karen Jean, who comes with a complicated past. I have two fathers on the spirit side, so that should be proved to be pretty interesting. My, my, my dad died when I was small, and then my mother remarried, and my stepfather was in my life for a considerably good amount of time. Karen and John sit down. There is an immediate connection. Have you lost the older brother or the dad, please? Yes. Okay. Yes to? Dad. Okay, because I feel like dad is the one who's going to probably be starting off here, because he makes me aware dad's here, okay? Dad is here, all right? Then another father figure steps in. He calls himself Joe. 
Sure enough, Karen's second father's name, Joseph. And it's funny with these two dads, okay? Mm -hmm. Was Joe closer to you than the original dad? Well, yes, because he raised me. Okay, because Joe was stepping forward like, and I'm not playing favorites here, but Joe wants to be like, <laughs> I am the dad. I am the, I'm dad. the dad. I'm the dad, okay? <laughs> He's the one stepping closer here also, all right? Okay. Then come the family nicknames no one could know. Does somebody have an Elvis connection? <laughs> Do you understand that? Yes. Okay, because I'm, I'm, back in the, I'm, I'm back in the 50s now, and I'm looking at Elvis, and I'm supposed to say Elvis to you, whether he looked like Elvis or someone collect Elvis stuff. There's something about Elvis, and I'm getting the, the DA. Do you understand that? My husband's nickname is Elvis. It's okay, fine. That works for me, because make sure your husband knows that, okay? This, Joe is definitely wants to come through with the Elvis hair. And where could John have possibly come up with this one? Karen's daughter's very unique nickname. What's with the name Jelly Belly? <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> Jelly something? Uh, um, Jelly beans? Uh, Jelly bellies? <laughs> That's Danielle. <laughs> okay. Can you explain that for the yes. camera? Yes. Um, we... Our nephew used to call her Danielle, and then they'd say to her, Yelly Belly and Jelly Belly. Oh, fine. And okay. More specifics about Karen now, things John Holland couldn't know beforehand, things that would be impossible to guess. Where is, um, I know we're in New Hampshire, but where is, where is the, the beach house? Hmm. Okay, Karen, who collects the conch shells? I do. Okay, because he's putting, all right, because he's blowing the conch shell for me to say conch. I'm okay. thinking it's beach. So you have something about shells that you collect yes. or something? John signals the energy is fading away, and Karen is stunned. It floored me when he said Jelly Belly <laughs> um, in regards to Danielle. It, it, it just floored me that he, he brought both my fathers in, because I think that that would be a difficult thing for anyone to know. They would, they would just be assuming that you have one father. How could they know? But he brought them both in. Still don't believe? Well, don't look to John Holland to convince you. He says that's not his job. And it's not his job to know everything. Like when I asked him if he's got this psychic ability, why he never got advance warning about the horror of September 11th. Well, Jen, I, I believe that, uh, first of all, I'm not God, okay? I believe that there are some things that we're not supposed to know. And I think about September 11th, the people who, that passed, because of them, I think it'll be a better place now in the world. John's the first to admit what he does may not appeal to the masses, but he believes he's servicing two worlds, people who have been lost and the ones who have been left behind. He is simply the phone wire carrying the message. The spirit is always there, just a thought away. I want to reach more people in, in a bigger way. And if I can help them or if I can help them know that we do all go on or if I can help them in some small way or if I push a button that makes them say, how could he have known that? And then they do their own research, then I think I've done my job.